Herbal. Or life. So let's not forget, Trump got convicted of 30, 37 felonies in New York City. Well, New York. What do you think is going to happen now? His sentencing is supposed to be on September 18th, where the judge has the option of sending him to jail. So now the news and there's some people that are worried. If he gets sent to jail, that's with no secret service. That's crazy. In this episode, we're going to talk about it. Welcome to Verbal Online. My name is Noel. But before I go on the news, check out Elon Musk breaking it down with Donald Trump in the dance floor. For all men, Donald Trump can dance. This looks crazy. I mean, we got to give it up to the man. Yo, and Elon Musk got those moves. I'm not playing the music because I don't want to get copywritten. Let me see if I can play a little bit of it. Yeah, I don't want to get copywritten. But Elon Musk and Trump, man, ever since they did that podcast, those two are unstoppable. Crazy. But all right. I got to copy those moves and give it a try myself. But yeah, September 18th. So we are what? What's today? We are August 15th. So in about two months, the judge is going to, like, Trump already tried to file paperwork to try to get the case dismissed. But the, tr the judge is not having it. And right now, it's all hands on deck to try to get Trump out the race. So I think the judge is going to give him maybe like two to three months in jail. And that will be epic. That he has to, he's running for president and is in Rockets Island waiting for his sentencing to finish and waiting for the election to finish. Cause if he gets sentenced and wins, that's crazy. But here, let me put the news report so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Sean. Former prosecutor you are, this is breaking news. We just learned that attorneys for former President Donald Trump sent a letter to Judge Juan Mershon asking to delay his New York criminal case sentencing until after the election. Judge Mershon also denied yet another Trump team request for the judge to recuse himself from the case. Trump's legal team argues the judge's daughter's work with the Democrat Party, including Vice President Harris, is a conflict of interest. Trump's sentence on 34 felony counts is scheduled for September 18th, just 48 days before the election. Our own legal analyst, Andy McCarthy, said it's all part of a much bigger play. He writes in a new opinion piece, quote, the objective here is to enable Vice President Harris and the media Democrat complex to label Trump a convicted felon sentenced to prison just weeks before election day. At a yeah, so like, are you able to vote for a convicted felon that's in jail? Do you have what it takes to go in that voting booth and vote for this man? This is going to be epic. And we got to point it out. After this, I want to make predictions. The time when Americans will already have started voting in many states, not least the potentially decisive Pennsylvania battleground, what is your analysis of this? Because he has said, we, I'll hear the arguments on the Supreme Court ruling on presidential immunity, but I'm still planning to sentence you on September 18th. Do the pre uh, president's lawyers have a case to move the sentencing at the very least? Well, listen, of course, it doesn't matter what should happen, what the law dictates you should do. Juan Rashan does what he wants to do, right? So these are all issues that can come up on appeal, but that's going to come, you know, years later, right? So again, this matters for the election. Uh, I think Juan Rashan has such hatred for Donald Trump. I think his his gut reaction will be, I want to, whether it's house arrest or send him to prison, I think Andy McCarthy is right on that. But if you're Kamala Harris, you would say, listen, I'm moving up in the polls. I feel like I'm doing pretty well. I don't want Juan Rashan to inflame the American people and base to kind of really underscore the lawfare that we've engaged in. And they don't talk about election interference, but this is like election interference at the highest case because sending the man to Rockets Island or home imprisonment where you're not even able to talk to the people, 
It's going to be epic. You know, Donald Trump is doing a lot of first time ever. So there's going to be another one. A uh, man that I hope, you know what? Here, let me make my prediction. I hope he gets sent to Rikers Island. Because that means Donald Trump got to be able to survive in Rikers Island with no security. Because you're not allowed to take the secret service in there. That's unlawful imprisonment of the secret service agents. So that means Trump is going to have to walk in there by himself. And not only that, but I have to stay in jail for the next two months until election. And let's say he wins, then New York State got to let him go after the election. And we know the election are no November 4th or 5th, but they don't decide the election on that day. Some states take time to count the votes. Quote, unquote, they taking their time to count the votes. Even though they got computers, but they still need time. So really, we don't know who won till December. So if they send Trump to jail until December, this may have broken every rule that you could think of in politics. And with Donald Trump, not only do we want to send him to prison, he's, he, we, there's been an attempt on his life of assassination. I think Kamala Harris, if she could tell Juan Mershana, maybe she has, listen, let this case go. I don't want this case to be in the minds of the American people because you could, again, inflame them and Donald Trump could rise again in the polls because every time we've used lawfare against him, he's done better in the polling. More American people, more, more Americans like him when we uh, attack him. So let's not do it. But Juan Mershon, if left to his own devices, to Andy McCarthy's point, I think is going to sentence him either to house arrest or to jail. Um, and Sean, one thing that the president, and Andy notes this in his article, one thing the president's attorneys um, noted is that they claim that the lucrative political work Marshawn's daughter has done for Vice President Kamala Harris should be seen as more significant now that Harris has replaced Joe Biden as, his, sure. as Trump's opponent in the upcoming election, that that has to be taken into account, which will surely be ignored by the judge. Well, they, they can just real quick. It, it's either you, you have a conflict or you have the appearance of a conflict. Right? And also for the system, you know, a man charged with 37 felonies and doesn't get sent to jail. What does that say about the, the civil system or the, the court system? They're not being fair. So it's not showing all the other prisoners what we do with men that are found guilty of 37 felonies. So in order just to keep everything legit and make people think that this is all legit, he got to get sent to jail. We got to see it on Trump in handcuffs walking into Rockers Island. That will be epic image. Right, and that's when judges should get off. And because of the work of Mershon's daughter, uh, at least there is the appearance of a conflict here. And Yeah, for the legal system, um, belief of the legal system, he got to get sent to jail. And that's another thing that they just found out, that the ABC person doing the um, debate is actually a Democrat um, donor who donates to the Democratic Party. So she has a conflict of interest, a whole bunch of conflict of interest here, all on the Democratic side. Think about that. And he should remove himself from the case. But again, if that happens, Dagan, you might get a, a, a fair and impartial judge. Mershon can't let that happen. He has a political vendetta against Donald Trump. So he wants to keep this case so he can extract some pain from President Trump, not because of the law, not because of what Donald Trump did, but because of politics, that's what this is all about. As Andy said, politics, not- They're making the legal system look bad if they don't send this man to jail. Justice. Sean, I'll see you later. That's right. What time is that, 6 p.m.? 6 o'clock. 6, 6 p.m. Fox Business, great to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you too. Breaking last hour, bombshell reporting on the death of Friends actor Matthew Perry. Law enforcement making multiple arrests in their investigation into who supplied Perry with the drugs that led to his fatal overdose. Plus, All right. Plus Anti-Israel protesters causing chaos in the streets of New York. The violent clash with police happened after a rally for Vice President Kamala Harris. Some fear we could see this play out on a much larger scale at the Democratic convention next week. 
<laughs> so this is going to cause the... Oh, it's going to bring more problems to Kamala Harris to win. Here's what I found also real quick. Elon Musk wrote, haters will say this is AI. Haters will hate. I always say that. This can't be AI. These two men... Yo, shout out to Donald Trump that he could make these moves at his age. The man is what? 76? A movie like this? This can't be AI. It's crazy. But according to Elon Musk, he wrote, haters will hate. <laughs> well, he wrote, haters will say this is AI. Well, you can't tell by the way I use my Epic. But let me keep talking about this. So, I hope Trump gets sent to jail. If he does get sent to jail, he's going to be given a date. And he's probably going to have to drive himself to, to Rikers Island. Um, or the judge might decide to right then and there handcuff him and take him to the back of the court. And then from there, process him to Rikers Island. And that's just going to be epic to see a next president in handcuffs walking into Rikers Island. Um, I think that's just going to get him more and more votes, in my opinion, if everything works out. Um, so I kind of hope he gets locked up just so he could win. Because then if he does win in November, how? how? Like, how are they going to show that on TV that right now, as we speak, ex-president Donald Trump is being released from Rikers Island? The system works. You know? You got your haters who vote, will never vote Trump. But the reality is, this man taking a bullet for this country. He did great when he was president. And now deciding to go to jail when he doesn't have to. The man is a billionaire. So that would be crazy. But again, my name is Noel. Here at Verbal on Life. Thanks so much if you found value in this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up before you go anywhere. All right, let me see what else is on the news. We also have Harris is refusing to comment on her election because right now she's going through the honeymoon period. So she still got people supporting her, even though they have no clue what the hell she's talking about because she's not talking. So not talking is a strategy. Lesson learned, write it down. That's what we do. All right, I want to run another video. Speaking about what's going on with Kamala Harris. You know, also another thing that's on the news is the YSL trial. They got little Woody on the stand. His lawyer quit, which is just bringing more drama to the situation. So he got himself another lawyer. And that's just extending the court. Which is one of the problems with our court cases. They get extended. And then we don't even have a clear date as to when it's going to finish. Or when it's going to be over. Or verdict is going to be reached. All right, let me play this video. Check this out. This is outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany. Here with my co-host, Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Fox and Friends first co-host, Carly Shimkus, Fox News contributor and president of American Spirit Enterprises and author of Fear Itself, great book, Tammy Bruce. And it's his first time on the couch. Yeah. We welcome Woo! former U.S. attorney and former counsel <laughs> for the Senate Judiciary Committee, raising the roof there, Brett Tolman. Well, we start with this. Former President Trump, going on offense with blistering attacks on Vice President Harris. He's calling her out for her stunning reversals on her own policy positions. So for every position the fake new Kamala takes down and all of these positions three weeks ago, the real Kamala said the exact opposite, the exact opposite. With me, you will always have a president who tells it like it is. You will always have somebody where I let you know where I stand and you can vote for me or not. The Kamala migrant invasion is also a major factor in crushing your wages and driving up 
the cost of health care and the cost of all of your the migrant invasion that's very good commenting i think churches need to definitely keep continue to get um tips and hints as to what to say and when to say it because we need more messaging like this definitely is harris invasion Goods. She's flooding our country with millions and millions of low wage migrants and giving them welfare, free health care, food stamps, public benefits, and third. She's giving them what our military vets don't get. Kamala Harris wants to eliminate private health insurance. Does anybody have private health insurance here? A lot of people, yeah. She destroyed San Francisco. She's not going to destroy our country. So get your friends, get your family, register, volunteer, and get the hell out and vote. You got to vote. <laughs> On November 5th, we will save our economy. We will rescue our middle class. We will put America first, and we will make America great again. The messaging again it's all about messaging and what to say to get voters on his side and not just regular voters because i think the mega voters they're not going anywhere you know and he received like 80 million slash over 80 millions but now you want to get those voters plus liberal voters that like to switch their votes every now and then you know who consider themselves thinkers and actually think about the candidate for making a vote. You know what? You know what? I hate the fact that Joe Rogan doesn't want to bring on Donald Trump. You know, he wants to stay neutral, which to me just sounds like he wants to stay democratic. He wants to stay with the Democratic Party no matter what. Because he knows that his voice on uh, meeting with, with a presidential candidate definitely gives him a boost. And I hate the fact, it sounds fake that he doesn't want to bring on Trump. Like he doesn't want to help Trump whatsoever. So much so that he spoke great about RFK, which sounded like an endorsement. And that got Donald Trump pissed off. I hope you get booed. So there are different views as to what people think. Was it a good thing that Trump did that or, or was it a, a bad thing? Is it a good thing that is it a good thing that Joe Rogan made that comment or is it a bad thing? Here, let me play the video for you guys. I'm gonna share my opinion. Here's a PBD podcast, PBD. First of all, Joe Rogan clarifies <clears throat> that he has not endorsed RFK, okay? He gets on a video, and on this video he says he's the only guy that seems like he's not calling anybody out. If you want to pull it up, Rob, he's not calling anybody out. Just play the clip. We'll go, we'll go from here. That's politics. They do it on the left. They do it on the right. They gaslight you. They manipulate you. They, they promote narratives. And um, the only one who's not doing that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You a fan? Bull. RFK Jr. is doing it. Yeah, I am a fan. Yeah, he's the only one that makes sense to me. He's the only one that he doesn't attack people. He attacks um, actions and ideas. But he's, um, he's much more reasonable and intelligent. I mean, the guy was an environmental attorney. and clean Why is Joe Rogan giving that guy props? What the hell is he talking about? RFK is a little bit of a loon. The man believes in abortion all the way up to the point the point of conception. That's insane. That's murder. End up the East River. I mean, he's he's a legitimate guy. You know, before anybody started calling him an anti-vaxxer, which I thought he was too. I thought he was this nut, this like conspiracy theorist nut, until I read his book. I read the real Anthony Fauci. And I'm like, what is it? how much of this is real? Because if it's all real. This is fucking insane. And we live in a world where we're being manipulated by these health organizations that are being paid by the pharmaceutical drug interests. And these pharmaceutical drug companies are pumping these products out into the population and telling us that we need them and then making pause it right insane amounts of money. So he makes this comment. Trump comes out with a tweet. Trump says, I wonder what the fans are going to react when he walks into the next UFC. I'm sure you guys, did you guys read that? That was a good point that he made. Come on now, because... Donald Trump is a fighter, right? But that's how you fight when it comes to advertisement and entertainment. You may post like that. At on yeah. the unusual suspect. Mm -hmm. You know, how they're going to react when they walk. And just go to images, Rob. It'll pop up if you go to images. And, you know, he makes these comments. And then uh, uh, Rogan comes back and says, I'm not endorsing RFK. All I'm doing is 
you know, uh, uh, he says uh, that's not an endorsement. Clear for Zarif case like a like Zarif as a person. Confusion over Rogan's uh, position on election arose following Tuesday during the pre- appearance. Uh, can I differentiate for the record? This isn't an endorsement. This is me saying that I like RFK Jr. as a person, and I really appreciate the way he discusses things with uh, civility and intelligence. I think we could use more of this uh, in this world. I also think Trump raising his fist and saying fight after getting shot as one of the most a- American effing things of all time. How about inviting Donald Trump to talk about that, to talk about the fact that you almost got assassinated? Because hey, Rogan is a horrible comedian. But he's a good podcast, so let's give him props for that. But only for that. So the least you could do is bring in Trump, and you will get views like in the billions, just like Elon Musk and Donald Trump got views. Okay, so that's that. Back and forth, and then it'll be interesting to see how loudly Joe Rogan gets booed next time he enters the UFC ring. And then you know what Joe Rogan does? Joe Rogan goes, by the way, kill Tony. Tony Hinchcliffe is killing it. That's exactly what he's doing. The guy's on freaking fire, mm-hmm. uh, selling out arenas with his a show that he's doing. I think he's got the best comedy show on a podcast in the world, kill apparently. Tony. Kill Tony, yeah. But Rogan posts a picture, maybe one of the best pictures he's posted on Instagram. If you go to Rogan's Instagram, this is why Rogan <clears throat> it, it understands the simple concept of humor. And if you if you look at the picture that he posts, he posts a picture saying, don't worry, we got it scored away. Me and Trump are good. And what was it? Him. A picture of him and Shane Gillis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it gets a half a million likes and everybody laughs and everybody moves on. The power of humor. Right. When this takes place, when, when an exchange like this happens, Vinny, how do you process this? When that happened with uh, Joe <sighs> You know, RFK, Trump, back and forth, Shane Gillis, humor. How do you process? Okay, that? so I, I I'm gonna take a couple of different angles because I could I could I know exactly where Joe Joe Rogan is a grown man. He could say what he wants, who he likes, and it shouldn't really bother anybody. Jeez, On the other God. side, I could see the the Trump people because mind you, I've been, I that when this happened, you have no idea how many messages I got because I try to play devil's advocate, PBD. You have to understand, coming from Trump, Trump hearing him saying. All, all these people gaslight you. He said all of them. So that includes Donald Trump. So he, he lumped them in there. And he said, all these people do this. <clears throat> and the only one. And, and- he forgets to say that Donald Trump is not a politician. This is the businessman who is an entertainer who knows how to speak to the public. So he's not really gaslighting you also because we saw a Trump presidency. So that's the, 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 the most truth you're ever going to get from a politician. Everybody else is gaslighting you. So how about you give Donald Trump his props? And it's not attacking people. The only one that's not doing it is RFK. From Donald Trump's point of view, you know he's a, he's a loyalist. He, Joe Rogan doesn't owe him anything. But if you think about it, he's had Joe Rogan has had how many years now? Seven years. Trump has shown through, through and throughout that he is exactly what the country needs. All the stuff that they did to him with CNN and the you know turning his color green for COVID. They did all that with Trump. They've been going after Trump this whole time. So I think Trump felt like, hey, listen, I've been nothing but I, I've proved myself through and through. I, when I see you at the UFC, I shake your hand. I give you respect. Even all that you haven't. That is so true. As a grown man, I don't expect you to do anything for me. Sure. Just don't talk shit about me. Like, why are you trying to put my, my candidacy down? Especially today when we have such an important election coming up. This is the most important election we ever had. So just to help out the country, to help this country, why don't you bring me on or do something? Or don't talk negative about me. How about that? Put me on your podcast. You don't even want to have me on your podcast. He said in the past he doesn't want to. So being Trump, I'm thinking as Trump, being, you know, the loyalist pen, he wants loyalty. Not that, again, he doesn't owe it to him. But I feel like for him to come out after everything that Trump has bled, he was shot in the head and getting to the point where he's showing you all this love and everything for you to still say, like, I'm gaslighting and I'm attacking the same. And that's Trump stepping out. The president of the United States stepping out to go shake your hand. Yeah. Joe Rogan is big. He got the biggest podcast. Him and Tucker Carlson got the biggest podcast. But my man, these are two giants talking. And Trump reached out to you, trying to be all positive. People that are attacking you have been attacking me for seven years. So I feel like Donald Trump, by the way, not a good move. I don't agree with it. I don't think coming out there and saying something like that, you could have said something like, hey, listen, not cool, Joe. I've been over here for you know, the whole time. I'm not a gaslighter. I'm not like that. But, you know, that's how Trump rolls, bro. Tom. And I'm, that's how I feel. So, I, I think, you know, you, you look at it 
And I, I thought Rogan was making a very casual point, a clear point. I read the book. You read RFK's book on Fauci. We know how Rogan feels about vaccinations. Everything went along with that. And he, he's talking about that. And he said, I found a reasonable guy. But right now, we are at the height of sensitivity. And we are in the middle of incredibly hot media yep. and trying to figure out, you know, is the Kamala bounce that we're seeing in the polls, is it really only 1%, 2%? Is it more than that? There is. You got Trump going up against the media, against the Democratic Party, and against all the haters that just don't want to see Trump elected. So every inch that he can get, he wants. And he goes for it. The man is not scared to put himself out there with anybody. So even Joe Rogan should put himself out there. Such a backstory going on here. And I think Trump is is very his ears are hypersensitive right now to what he's hearing from people. And I, I don't know if it was the best move to kind of come out on Rogan like that. But I don't think Rogan meant ill will trying to besmirch him. And I applaud Rogan for coming back and saying, hey, I wasn't endorsing him. This is what I was doing. So I thought Rogan was just trying not to keep it flamed, but to kind of get it to calm down and clarify. But, but let me ask you a question. Tom. Do you feel like uh, Trump is a little bit uh, perturbed that the number one podcast, I know he's flip-flopping back and forth with uh, with uh, Tucker, that he hasn't, not necessarily endorsed him, but have him on the podcast. Have a conversation. And you know what? Don't even endorse me. Just have him in a podcast. It's called The Conversation. Can we talk? What's going on? And try to have a conversation outside of politics. Yeah, it may be difficult, you know, but that's what conversations are all about, being difficult. So you just try to show people that this is a regular human being. They're a regular person. That's it. If that's what you want, if you don't want to talk politics. Conversation with them. Do, to publicly come out and say, no, I'm not I'm not interested in giving him a podcast at all. You don't feel like that kind of, and again, I not agree. I don't like what Trump did. I'm not, I know there's people out there like, oh, brainwash you, whatever. No, no, it's not a good move. He had no reason. I support Trump for doing that. The man is a hitter. He gets punched in the face, he punches back. Shout out to Trump. Reason to, why do that? It's almost as if a, a Gen Z person got on the phone and texted. You don't think it bothers him that he hasn't even invited him in on this Look, podcast? I, I can't speak to the Trump campaign strategy for where they're going to be interviewing what the media uh, travel plan is. Right now, Kamala Harris doesn't sit down with anybody. Yeah. So I can't say who's thinking what and who's concerned. There's a lot of open chairs with a lot of very influential podcasts that could really help this election and help with strategy. And so I think... With that said... Again, shout out to Donald Trump for standing up to Joe Rogan, Joe CIA Rogan. But comment down below if you enjoyed this podcast. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me talk to the wife over here. I'm on favor. Let me just play this to the end and then I'll be right back. I think Trump could be a lot of places. Um, I can't read into what he may or may not have been thinking about about Rogan's scheduling and and whether Trump's even available where he was going. Got him. So the question I think we need to ask is, was this a good move or a bad move for Trump to respond viciously to Joe Rogan? I would say it's a stupid move, President Trump. Why make Joe Rogan an enemy at all? Joe Rogan was a Bernie Sanders guy eight years ago, and he's inched closer and closer and closer and closer to your world. You know, many people think that Joe, Ro Joe Rogan is a right wing kook. He's not. He's a free thinker. He's an independent. He's a libertarian, probably, that likes to shoot guns, eat venison and meat and smoke weed and do his thing. And certainly we know about UFC. Why at all? have an issue with Rogan. How does that help you increase voters? It, it doesn't, doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. And and it, and, it, and it ruins your relationship with Dana. Because now you put Dana White gonna, in an awkward position yeah. because he walks in with the guy and he works for him. Yeah. I mean, and, and not look, a good move. You know, we had a conversation. We have a bet whether Trump is going to go on Rogan. We'll see. Yeah. Um, does, this, does this accelerate that? Th this Definitely does not, not. No, it does not. Ruined, I, I'm so, so mad. Let me just. You don't think this accelerates it? No. To, to, to not, oh, acceler accelerated to not to go on. Oh, this, this I think I hindered think it's the opposite. Really? I think yeah. it's completely let the opposite. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. You have no idea how the perfect storm happened. What is the perfect storm? Everybody follows someone's lead. Okay. And uh, Joe is gifted because he's hypersensitive. 
the, the hypersensitive people, we link hypersensitivity as a negative thing. Okay. Let's obviously there's hypersensitive, super insecure, lazy. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you understand those three? Yes. Hypersensitive, you know, uh, 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 insecure and lazy is very dangerous. Those three hypersensitivity with you're comfortable in your own skin and right. you're driven. Verbal. That's Michael. Super hypersensitive. Are you kidding me? He still doesn't talk. Joe Rogan finally responded to Donald Trump's online criticism after the former president called out Rogan for making pro RFK Jr. remarks on his podcast. Joe Rogan is an absolute joke and a complete pussy. And if I ever saw him, I would whoop his bitch ass. What a coward. Joe Rogan, frankly, is an embarrassment to this country. He used to be such a powerful guy. What a guy. Everybody agrees this is one of the best guys. Joe Rogan is the best, and everyone knows it. And I love RFK. Who doesn't love RFK? He's a great guy. I know you were butthurt because I didn't endorse you. And he wasn't endorsing RFK. I'm gonna endorse this next gentleman. One of the greatest people that's ever lived. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Diaz. Oh my God.